Hey now, hey now, hey now, kitties. Wooks, wookettes, freaks, freakettes, hips and hippettes. It's Papa Stampa coming to you live on the bottom. It's 6 p.m. on a Friday, and if it's 6 p.m. on a Friday, that can mean only one thing. Yes, yes, Batman's and Nango. Your three solid hours of the sultry, soulful sounds of the Jerry Garcia solo catalog. This is going to be episode number 23 for July the 13th, 2017. Howdy, howdy, folks. It's a lovely Friday evening here in Indianapolis. And boy, do we have an amazing show for you here tonight. And it's a whopper. Yes, yes. If you can hear all that, that's six pages of notes Papa Stampa has because we have so much beautiful music to share with you this evening. I have tons of notes because it's a lot of music. What we're going to bring you tonight, we're going to bring you outtakes from David Crosby's album sessions for If I Could Only Remember My Name. These go under the heading Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra. Perro Sessions in Taper's Nomenclature. We're going to bring you a heap and hunk of those outtakes, which is replete with one Jerome John Garcia and multitudes of the San Francisco Sound, including multiple members of the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, and quite a few others. So we got a lot to talk about and a lot to listen to, so we're going to get on into it. We're also going to dive into a lamentingly short super group called David and the Dorks at the end there. Well, let's get into it. These album sessions, which is lovingly referred to as the Pero Sessions in the Taper World for Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra, P-E-R-R-O, was a conglomeration of nothing but the best musicians of the San Francisco sound in the late 60s and early 70s. This was the pinnacle of the San Francisco movement. All these kids, David Crosby, Graham Nash, Jerry Garcia, Bill Lesh, Mickey Hart, Billy Kreutzman, Paul Kantner, Grace Slick, Norma Kalkinen, Jack Cassidy, David Freiberg, Neil Young, and a whole host of others all got together and helped each other make a couple of solo albums in the early 70s they helped make blows against the empire jefferson airplane seminal hugo nominated sci-fi album if i could only remember my name david crosby's first solo album baron von tolbooth and the chrome nun paul kander and grace slick's album and also sunfire sunfighter from mr kander and mrs slick also and they made some amazing albums when all these people got together. They basically just got together and helped each other out. Sat in, added some ideas, lent their skills at musical playing. They just did everything. They all just sat in with each other and bounced stuff off the walls, played some amazing music, created some even more amazing music right out of thin air. So we're going to get into this because it's a lot of music. So this was, these sessions come from David Crosby's If I Can Only Remember My Name album sessions from December 1970 to January 1971. If I Could Only Remember My Name, David Crosby's first solo effort. I highly recommend you go out and pick it up. It is an amazing album to say the least. Well, these tracks we're going to bring you come from the outtakes of those sessions recorded at Wally Hyder's studio in downtown San Francisco, right there on 245 Hyde Street, right there between Turk and Eddie. If you take a short walk around the corner from the war field, you'll find it. It's still there. Letters above the door say Wally Hyder's. It's just a small and nondescript building, but man, with some amazing music made there. If you go Google it, 
see the list of albums that were made there, you're going to be quite amazed. So David Crosby decided to record his album there. He sailed his schooner, the Mayan, up into San Francisco and docked it in Sausalito and spent his nights over at Wally Hyder's making this album. Now, this wasn't the first time all these people got together. No. Earlier in 70, all these folks showed up and helped Paul Cantner and Grace Slick make the Jefferson Starship album, Blows Against the Empire, which I mentioned earlier. Also, a seminal album. Definitely go out and pick that one up. It'll blow your mind. And they had so much fun, all these folks, making this album together that David Crosby thought he'd do it again. A few months later, he got ready to go record his album. He said, hey, folks, come on down. Help me out. So every night, depending upon what was going on, if they weren't on, certain people weren't on tour and in town, not doing anything, they would all drive down to Wally Hyder's studio and sit in and help David Crosby make this amazing album. So we're going to play you a nice heaping hunk of these outtakes right here for you tonight. It's going to sound like an outtakes tape. There's going to be a lot of cuts. There's going to be these weird sounds of the tape machines winding up and getting up to speed. But in there lies some beautiful music and a lovely little window into the process that went into making this album. And also a lovely little window into the world that was Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra, the greatest conglomeration of San Francisco sound artists ever to assemble and make music together. So why don't we get on into it? Because we got a lot of music. This first bit's going to be about 53 minutes long. You're going to hear a lot of great stuff. None of these songs ever made it onto this David Crosby album. A couple of them popped up on other albums for other artists in other configurations, but none of these takes ever made it onto this David Crosby album. There's even a little bit, two takes in here. Jerry teaching Loser to David Crosby and the boys. So sit back, pop open a cold one, roll up something nice, because you're going to enjoy this. This is some of the best music you'll ever hear. It gives Papa Stompa goosebumps just to talk about it. So let's get on into it. Here you go. The Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra, the Perro Sessions from December 1970 to January 1971, Wally Hyder Studio, downtown San Francisco, California. Enjoy, folks. Buckle up, because this is going to be a heavy-duty trip. Sure, it's the one that starts with it. Mm-hmm. 